So many of us live for the idea that a thing, a person, a place will fix us, but it never happens. We all have to live with the parts of us that are broken and find a way to be happy. I understood that now. There's this idea of happiness that it's this thing that you get to have all the time if you do it right. Like you just get to be happy 24 seven and it's like not the human condition. There's this illusion that it feels very American to me that you know, you can fix that bad feeling inside. And to me, that's a trap that really keeps empowering people who want to abuse us. So, I think we were at the part where you were groveling. I think that Kitty is one of these people for whom more opportunity has allowed her to unleash her inner baller. So she suddenly feels very empowered. Kiss it. Excuse me? My foot. Kiss it. She's over the top all the time. She always wants to win. That's Kitty. Kiss my foot. Or take a 50% cut in pay. Kitty is a bit like a python. It's like the more you struggle with it, the more you become entangled. I get my job back. Mm hmm But everything has a price. Are your scruples worth half your salary? She throws him a lot of sexual energy, and it's unnerving, you know? I don't think he knows which way is up around her. What I need is your loyalty. Is that a yes? Yes, ma'am. Kitty is a manipulator, and Kitty will create whatever environment she needs to to extract what she needs from an individual. Madam CEO, I'm hoping now that Stanley is out, I can get back to reporting the actual news. Here's the thing. We've been friends a long time, so this is hard to say. I feel you've lost your way at UNN. I don't think Kitty has real friends. I think Kitty has frenemies. She'll bring them closer as she needs them, and then she'll dispense with them. So Cheryl is probably smart enough to know that she's only a friend for as long as she kisses the ring. Cheryl's seen it before. She knows what this woman's capable of. And she's told in no uncertain terms, you know, who's driving the bus here. If you feel my job is, I don't know, mindlessly following orders, then maybe this isn't the right home for me. Cheryl, I'm so glad you feel the same way. What happens when you go up against your boss? You lose your job. She says, mindlessly following orders. My problem is that having leaders is patriarchal crap. Yeah, I used to feel the same way until I realized how hard it is to get 12 people to agree on anything. This is how we're going to die. Nobody's going to catch us. We're going to talk ourselves to death. <laughs> After all these ideas of who Jennifer is and what they stand for and who they're gonna be, they are just women. They're women who have gotten fed up but they are perhaps the most genuinely bonded tribe we come across yet. I think that um, all the women have some real strength and some may not be as obvious when you first see them, but there's this hidden underlying fever that burns in all of them that unites them. If you've ever been involved in a mission and you're all rowing in the same direction in a way, that feeling is really powerful. And they're starting to fray around the edges, but there's a quality to this tribe of women that's really beautiful and unexpected. To Plum, our newest member. To, to Plum. Plum! Jennifer lives! I think Plum is really struck by Jennifer. And I think she learns her worth and her value. That's what she's been looking for, in a sense. She can't just revert back to her old life. To me, the theme is you can't really fight the status quo unless you know yourself. Plum thought that being a acceptable size six or four would fix her and make her happy. That as a goal is not happiness, it's hope. It's actual hope that, you, that we can change the world. What had I learned about myself, really? I was a fighter, a crazy, adventure-loving, badass mama and I really did believe the world could be a better place, even just a little. <laughs>